Well, all right, y'all. Um, see if I can't bend down here with my knee. Um, this comes off in about, I don't know, a week. Probably be done with it in a few days, actually. Uh, legs strong enough that I'm able to support myself without the brace, really. Um, indoors and everything. Outdoors, it's still safe to wear it. And, uh, or safer to wear it just because of holes, uneven, you know, unstable ground. But at any rate, uh, contemplated doing this just an unedited video, and I might, starting from this point, and uh, just have these baits in the water, maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes. Um, I've got some worms in my ultralight rod, might do some ultralight fishing, but uh, it's early morning, only got about two hours, uh, then I got to get out of here. So we'll only bait up probably four or five times, and uh, hopefully we can land us a carp. And then I might do some, you know, bank fishing with some worms, but the bank's a mess. Um, after the, uh, the hurricane moved through last week, uh, Hurricane Helene, uh, the water, you know, rushing downstream through these creeks uh, out to the river, you know, has carried a lot of debris. So the bank here is just covered in sticks and there's different logs. It's way different than it was, you know, a month or so ago, the last time I fished this spot. And so it'd be a little bit difficult, but we might try to, you know, catch some bluegill or, you know, see what else is out there. I've caught some crappie, bluegill, uh, white bass, largemouth caught quite a few species here um just on worms and little jigs but um uh, i'm gonna sit back and you know just kind of enjoy the day and or the morning and then we'll uh hopefully hook into something well there goes an ambulance uh, that is the one thing about this spot is that it's not very peaceful in terms of you know uh i guess loudness it is very loud because we're only about 100 yards from the highway um, it's a good spot, great little park area, but it's close to the house. So that's why, you know, when I don't have a lot of time, this is one of the spots I prefer to go to. Um, and plus there's a little bit of shade cause there's a few trees, you know, pretty tall trees that over, you know, overshadow the bank and stuff. So stay out of the, the sun, stay out of the heat. It helps keep the camera school too, uh, in the warmer months, but we're finally heading into fall. So that's going to be less of an issue. Uh, once it cools down, those cameras, don't really overheat as much so i'll be thankful for that um trying to think what else there is let's see uh that's it it's uh it's october early october um just not really sure what these carp what their pattern and behavior is but the water's still pretty warm we still have some days in the 80s right now nights are getting cool in the 50s next week's in the 40s at night so water temps definitely going to be dropping uh I'm sure it's probably 78, 79 right now. And this weekend, it'll probably heat back up to about 81. And uh, I'm gonna go out on the boat and I'll confirm that. But uh, that is my thoughts right now, just judging on the weather that we've been having. But uh, let's uh, sit back and maybe we'll tell some stories and talk a little bit about what we're doing. And maybe we'll catch a fish. And hopefully this is a fishing video, I guess. if. If you're seeing it, then we caught something. If not, then we didn't catch anything. So, all right, I'm gonna stand up. Oof, that hurts my leg just a little bit. I'm gonna walk down this bank a little bit, try and find some open-ish areas, not too far from our uh, our rods because i don't i can't really run yet with my knee so i don't need to be too far from everything just in case we were to hook into something really big i don't need them taking the rod with them well that worm just kind of broke off Tip that hook, but I can't even get him to come out the other end. There it is. Oh, that actually threaded on there. Perfect. But I want a little bit more meat for these fish to have a chance to get it. You don't need to do this. Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't, but I like to 
just kind of curl them up a little bit sometimes sometimes i just put a whole worm on there if i'm expecting you know larger fish but if we're going after panfish and just any species i'll kind of just double it up a little bit give those panfish a chance it's probably only about two feet two and a half foot of water right there i can see and through the water about seven eight feet out there but it's 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 muddy it's dirty there's a lot of debris I mean, you can see just sticks and logs all up and down the bank i mean normally there's a lot of debris and logs here this is just one of those spots that where everything washes up but right now there's just so much more a week out from that flood and the water's a little high so i'm guessing they're holding some water in the lake above the old hickory dam i don't know what their plans are tva there um, all that water had to come downstream from um, up north so i'd imagine as it worked its way through the locks and the dams it uh it helped fill us up because we're pretty full right now i would say it's above normal pool level actually may have to adjust our depth here on the bobber it's only about 18 20 inches deep I'm gonna try this other side, even though there's a ton of crap here. Don't wanna to get too far from our stuff. Oh, we already got us a fish here. What is, that was a good little bump. I'm gonna sit this down for just a second. Watch this one in the middle. This is the new rod and reel got um had somebody in one of the videos comment and say that i should get you know a bait runner um i've never used them i think i've had one before i just never used the the bait runner part of it and i think i've got it set up right and that's a cast king uh sharky bait runner um i forget the size that might be a four or five thousand i wanted a a large one so i can take this out to the river and uh you know get a good long cast on it and not worry about the line uh being too too short i mean i want to throw this thing 100 yards with some good weight on it and uh i think i got it set up a fish done swim with it i can see the line is definitely not straight where it should be and i can't tell now if it's moving or not but any rant it's a pin squadron nine foot two-piece rod it's a medium moderate fast action and again the cast king sharky bait runner i got it on so curious to see how it works with these fish what they're going to do but maybe we'll hear it clicking in a minute but yeah that's good i mean that's good news we had us a bump and that was a little bit bigger than a bluegill i don't think a bluegill would have had the power to do what it just did so i almost went out on the boat this morning but i got like i said i didn't have enough time so just gonna stick to the bank i don't like to do the boat unless i've got at least you know three hours um, anything less than three hours it's almost a hassle to trailer it load it or unload you know launch it then load it and then take it back and put it up put the cover on it and everything because i don't have it in the garage so i have to i like to put the cover on it and so 
time I do all that, it takes, you know, that's probably shoot 45 minutes of time alone, just, you know, getting the boat ready, launching it and loading it and all that stuff. So, and you know, dry, you know, unloading it back at the house all together. And I just don't have the time. This one's moving, I feel like. I just can't tell if that's a little bit of the, the breeze moving it or what. Or if it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. I Honestly, I have no idea. I don't know that. It had a little pull right there. There's braid on this one too. I think it's 20 or 30 pound braid, I forget. Might be 25 actually. I had a bunch, a big old spool laying around. And uh, I wanted to put the, the high vis braid, that yellow braid on here. It's my favorite line to use. And uh, just because of the visibility, I'm, I love seeing the line and watching it move. This one over here has got the tripolymer line from Casking on it, and I can't see it at all. Literally can hardly see it against the water if you just get the right spot so good thing I mean means fish can't see it if they are line shy but in my experience carp are not as line shy as people make them out to be now I suppose they could be um, especially if, you know, they've been caught a bunch of times, they could start to get a little skittish around line and different things. So, but the carp here in Tennessee, especially around middle Tennessee, I've, I've not met one other carp angler in years. I met one guy, okay, I take that back, one guy about a year and a half ago at the dam he was fishing and that is the only guy I've ever seen fish for carp. Been around thousands of guys in this area and everybody, you know, considers them trash fish. So everybody's into bass fishing and crappie around here. So, which is great for me because if nobody's targeting these carp, that means they've not been caught and that's just more for us to catch. So. I ain't complaining at all. All right, I thought that line was moving, but I don't think it is. I'm watching this one in the middle. I think the water's slowly moving, and that made me think it was moving. Not a whole lot of flow or anything today. Got some stuff jumping over there. Just checking, uh, checking the weather, see what it's gonna do today. I think it's supposed to warm up in the 80s. And not a cloud in the sky. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be 86. Shoot. Tomorrow, 87. Whew. Sunny, 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 sunny. We don't have any clouds in the forecast for a whole week, which is good because I need to mow the grass kind of waiting because it's the yard still soaked from the hurricane system that moved in so I can't even mow right now if I wanted to because my yard is like a swamp half the time water table sits up real high so we get a little bit of rain or a decent amount of rain and I, I can't mow the yard because I just get stuck 
and ain't nobody got time for that. So, all right, give them about two, I don't know two more minutes, and I'm gonna reel them in, and we're gonna get some more bait out there. This one, I feel like this one is doing something. I cannot 100% say that because it's hard to see because there's low light because we're kind of in, we're in the shade from this tree, so it's hard to see, but there it is. Now the line's getting out of the shade. It's not moving though, and it's not getting any tighter. I left a little bit of slack in that one. This one's tight line, and then this one's pretty tight as well. I've had pretty good luck in both approaches, tight line, slack line. Nothing really ever seems to, you know, decre decrease my, my catch rate. It's a nice morning, but I'm gonna need a fish to make this a good day. I've said it before, I think, that I'm not antisocial, but when I'm fishing, I don't like to be the most social person in the world. I will talk though. I mean, somebody comes up, I've done it many a times, given advice, tips, talked about fishing, life to strangers. So I, I will have a conversation with them and be friendly, but my ideal fishing is alone or just with the people that I'm, you know, fishing with on the boat or on the bank, family, friends, stuff like that. I do not like going to crowded spots at all. In fact, I won't. I just, I, I have driven by many spots with the intention of, you know, setting up and fishing or and I just won't, I'll just, I just leave. I ain't doing it. Saw a picture the other day actually on some Instagram or a video and it was, I guess some stream, small river um, where trout fishing is real popular. And there was probably a hundred guys within a 50 yard stretch, both sides of this stream, just fly fishing. And I just, I'd rather do anything than that. It looked absolutely miserable. And that, I mean, I guess it could be fun if you like to just cast and talk to people, but not me. Another good thing about this spot is not a lot of bass boats will come back here. So there's hardly any boat traffic. Whoop, that was me, not a fish. So hardly any boat traffic, which is always a plus. Um, I'm trying to get a ton of bait on this one this time, but I needed to stick it. Last time we kind of lost half the bait that we threw out. So we really need a good ball to get out there this time and give us a chance. Luring these fish in, get some more bait in the water. All right. About it. That is the spot.
right. I think I was watching uh, Outdoors with Tom. He's a really good, got a really good channel for, for carp fishing. Oh, we just got hit over here. I better. That was a good hit. That was a carp for sure. Mm. Better get back to this. I was trying to cast and whew. That was a carp. Come on. And then freshen those two up. I'm gonna leave this one alone for another minute. Since we just got a good hit on it, that tells us there's still bait. Or at least the hair rig is still good, which it should never pop off. That quarter pop up corn with the bait stop, I've never had one really pop off. Watching that line. Come on, baby. Uh, but what was I saying? Shoot, now I don't even know what I was saying. All right, well, what was I saying? I was holding that rod, about to cast. Oh, Outdoors with Tom, yes. Great channel, great guy, um, good carp fisherman. Uh, I think he lives out in Iowa or Missouri, Nebraska, somewhere in the Midwest. And uh, great videos, good content, a lot to learn. I've actually learned a few things and picked up a few things from him. And one of the things I, uh, that he, he and I do similar is I don't use the line stops on uh, the reels. A lot of people, you know, to keep their cast uh, distance the same is they'll put that line stop on there. That way the next cast, you know, gets stopped, right? Um, I don't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't, I've actually never done it. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good at casting within a five to 10 foot range every time if I'm targeting a spot. So if you're not good at casting, um, then that's probably what you should do. But once you've been casting enough, you uh, you should be able to hit, you know, a 10 foot target from, you know, 50 yards away. Well, shoot. I was going to give this one another minute since we had a good hit, but nothing sent. So let's rebate it. I just heard a bell. This one on the left maybe had a little hit. Yeah, let's, uh, let's rebait this one. I don't know been too long since the last hit. Oh yeah, this one's getting hit. Line's not going tight. I think they picked it up and swam this way with it because now we got more slack.
trying to get to the right spot where I can see that line. That line is hard to see unless you've got some light or a you know a background to look against. And right now it's blending in almost everywhere. So, all right, let's uh, let's redo this one while we're hoping for that one to to get hit. I got the drag a little loose on this one. I'm gonna tighten it up. But after we get it in, because I don't want to snag right here. What do we got? Some leaves? Yep. Oh, look at that. Had a scale. That's a carp scale. Eh. Actually, it's hard to say. But there's a little scale. So we had something. Must have bumped into it. Hard. Pull a scale off like that. Great, that guy's letting his dog crap and not pick it up over there. It's pretty typical behavior. What I see a lot anyways, at parks. There it goes, bottom. So I think that's in about five foot of water. old creek channels where we're throwing that huh. all right i guess i should i'm gonna have to start bringing my dog thought about it for a while he's just a rambunctious little well, he's not little he's not young um He's just very, very playful, full of energy. So I'm gonna have to bring him out. I'm gonna get him on the boat. He's never been out there, so I think he'd love it. He loves getting out, so. Sheds a lot though, Whew, it's the worst. I've got a Roomba running in my house almost 12 hours a day. Well, it's a nice morning. We only got an hour left. So that stinks, but. Good news is we've, we've had a fish, or we've had a good hit. 100% had a carp hit. Um, you know, getting outside, getting some fresh air so I can't complain. I'm stuck inside all week. Um, got a desk job being a software guy, so constantly just staring at a computer and programming just, whew, it kills me just sitting inside because I am not an indoors person. So having to sit inside and not get out during the week is, uh, is rather painful, really painful. Oh, 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 well, shoot, I am tired. I might have to get me some coffee. This Diet Coke's got some caffeine in it, but it ain't got a whole lot, so I'm missing out on uh, some caffeine. I'm gonna scoot up just a little bit. 
make it easier to get these rods, but should we get a hit? Right now, these lines, this one's a little slack. That one's a little slack, and then this one's pretty tight. Um, again, just to recap, we've got high-vis braid, or yellow braid, high-vis, whatever you call it, on the two, on the center and the right. And then we got tri-polymer for casking, from casking on the left. I think it's 10 or 12 pound tri-polymer. Got 25 pound braid and that's 20 or 25. Might be 20 on the one on the right. Um, our leaders, we got two braid leaders, one fluorocarbon. The fluorocarbon's this one in the center. Two braid leaders are on the outside. Uh, using corda pop-up corn on the hair rigs, um, corda hooks. I think they're size eight and six, maybe wide gate uh, hooks for cart fishing, and um, that's it. And then our pack bait: oats, sweet feed, and corn, and a little extra sugar in there. So just a little bit of sugar. Um, Oh, and again, I guess, well, I've been using these Cast King Crixix, uh six and a half, seven foot rods, maybe? They might be seven. These might be sevens. Yeah, sevens. Uh, seven foot rods, medium, fast action. Been using those. I like those. I like them a lot. I use them for bass fishing, a lot of things. And um, makes it real fun fighting a carp on, you know, a medium action rod like that. Um, so been using those, those are Cast King, just spinning reels. That's the L Royale Legend, I think, and that's the Megatron on the right. And then that's the Cast King Sharky Bait Runner that we just got, and this is our first time taking it out, so maybe we'll get a fish on it. That would be great. Um, although I did hear someone say, gosh, I can't remember if it was, uh, Micah Burkhart, um, he's a big cat fisherman. He has the state record in Tennessee for blue cat, 123 pound or something. And uh, I think he said something on one of his videos. He had some new gear and he said something about the new gear curse when he was out fishing. And I guess a curse is not a good thing. So I'm guessing there's, uh, you know, one of those old tales that uh, if you got new gear, you ain't gonna catch anything. I sure hope not, cause, oh, there it is, this one, there it is, come on, come on, oh, come on, baby. It danced a minute, but he didn't hook himself, shoot, come on, run with it. Another thing about this spot is I just don't like the parking lot right behind me. I don't know why I keep coming back here. Well, I do because I don't have a ton of time. There it goes. It's moving. It's moving. Come on. This one in the middle of this line. It's doing something, but he's not hooked. And I don't want to set the hook today. I feel like I'll miss him. I have set the hooking several carp, just lifting the rod and watching it swim away and then just giving it a little pull and boom, you hook those carp good, but which is fun. But it's also just as fun if they can hook themselves. So I don't want to scare them by picking that up and yanking it and, you know, causing a lot of commotion spooking them off and waiting for them to come back so um what was i saying again i just i'm getting so distracted today um which is a good thing because our rods are getting hit when i get distracted but uh it's happened twice now i was gonna say oh there it goes there it goes come on now oh, he dropped it again did he i can't tell
tell if he's still swimming with it or not. I'm gonna let that line go slack in the water and see if it doesn't start lifting up. I think he might have it, or he's still rooting around in that little spot. That's me lifting it there. I just wanted to kind of see where it's going out there. Nothing. I'm gonna leave it because we didn't pull it too far from where it was at. So if they're still in the area, they're still baiting that, that hair rig still solid. So I'm gonna leave it for five to 10 minutes and we're rebaiting. Hmm. That middle one again. Can't tell if it's moved again or not. I don't see a whole lot of activity in terms of uh, feeding. I don't see hardly any shad flipping. So it's very very calm back here. Next week, I think I'm going to go catfish. I think I'm going to take the boys. We're going to get up early and catch some bluegill. I've got some frozen skipjack and we're gonna go catfish the river for three to four hours on a nice day next week. It'll be fun. Like to get, get a new PB with the boys, that'd be super awesome. Um, I can't tell where that line is now. All right, see it? Dang, we were just right. Almost too close to the highway. All right, that was a cart. Not far from where we're at at all, from where this bait is. What I was saying, we're so close to the highway. I don't like it. I don't think I'll come back here often and do videos. Maybe a night fishing video would be fun. Less traffic, you know, real late night after dark, nine, 10 o'clock. It's a pretty busy highway, so it's still, they have some traffic, but nothing like right now. This next cast, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start hitting a different spot. I think I'm gonna throw this one 50, 60 yards out. I'm gonna give it a fling. This one I'm gonna keep hitting 
about 40, 45 yards where it had been going. This one, eh, probably keep it about the same. I'm really interested in this one in the center. It just seems like it, it's doing stuff. I better turn that on. I forgot to click it on. Maybe that's why we missed that one. I don't know. Because that was a pretty good little hit when we were just watching it last time. Honestly, I don't know much about bait runners. Um, you know, what I've always done is I've either left the spool open or loosened the drag so much that, you know, a fish can run with it and not take the rod. I have goofed up a few times and forgotten to loosen the drag or forgot to open the bell and had a rod get ripped into the water. Um, got a video about that. It was terrible. Which is one reason I don't buy super expensive equipment. Um, I just, I'm too rough. I leave rods in the truck and they get thrown around and beat up. And I can't go spend a hundred dollars on a rod, hundred on a reel very often. So usually I'm buying, you know, more budget friendly stuff. This one's definitely doing something. Looks like the line is slowly going this way. There's a turtle about 15 yards out. Our baits are way past that, so. Come on. Now I see some shad. Saw one flip out there. That creek channel stays pretty active. Oh, we got a hit on this one. There it is, there it is. That might be a turtle. Those are little bumps. Yeah, I'd say that was a, a big bluegill shell cracker. I don't know. If, I mean, I guess shell cracker would probably pick around on that food. That looked like a carp swirl right there. But. 15, 20 yards out. Our bait on this one is only about 25 yards. So it's somewhere in that area where I just saw that. So we got about 45-ish minutes. So we should be able to, I think we can get us one in 45 minutes. I'm about to rebait them though. This is what we only, I think we've only done twice now. So I've been leaving the baits out there for quite a time. So I might need to put some more food out. Food, chum, bait, whatever you want to call it. That looks like a carp feeding on the surface right there. What in the shad flipping? That's a big old, there's a big, big ripple effect. I've said something about that before. I don't know if I put it in the video or not. Is once you watch fish enough and watch um, watch them hit the surface, and you know you you'll learn how shad um, differ in the ripple and the you know the splashes that they'll make on the surface compared to a carp. This one is definitely moving. It is 100% moving to the right, but I don't, it's not a, he's not hooking himself, so I don't know if it's carp now. I'm gonna let it just go, see what this bait runner thing's about. Oh, I think I was talking about that too and got sidetracked by the fire truck. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, the bait runner, never used one, so I don't know. I guess it's just, I don't know how it differs. I guess I could Google it, but how does a bait runner differ from just loosening the drag? Left one jingled. Um, yeah, how does it? I don't know. I guess if, if, if you know and you want to, tell me, you know, what you know in the comments and 
So I don't know. I'll look it up, but everybody's got their own saying on different things. So I'm curious what, you know, somebody might know that I don't or might differ from what somebody else says online. So how does a bait runner, that clicker differ than the, the drag system? I don't know. I'm super curious now. Not gonna look it up right now. I'm not that curious, but. <sighs> mm, two minutes. This one's still getting played with. Could just be turtles now. Cause it's not really, it's not doing a whole lot. Car pits it, he's gonna hook himself. Unless he just misses it, which does happen. So, pretty positive we've had hit car pits on these two, the center and the right one. Left one's just kind of been played with smaller stuff most of the time. I have caught a couple carp here, so I know they're back here. I think the biggest carp I caught here is about 10 pounds. Heck of a fight in it. It was a great fish when I caught that one. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't think I'll come back here often in the day and fish just with this, uh, the way the, uh, the highway is just right back here. Good little park, nice little place to fish, but not the most ideal when you're trying to just have a relaxing session. There we got hit again on this one on the right. It's not my foot, because my foot was in the middle, so. That wasn't a car pit right there, or the ripple was not from a carp. If it was, it was a smaller one. I think we just got some bluegill panfish in this little area. Just pecking away at it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I was going to go to a new spot today. But I literally drove by it and there was too many people. Uh, there was like four guys bank fishing. I said, nope. It's not even the fact that I don't like setting up the cameras and talking in front of people. I mean, I don't mind it. I'll do it. Um, that was a carp, 100%. Jeez, that was a good one. Um, I don't mind doing it, talking on camera in front of people or filming. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I don't like to constantly be talking uh, if other people are around, you know, because they could be trying to have a peaceful time and I'm not trying to be down down the bank hooping and hollering and having a ball you know it just depends you know who it is if they come talk to me then i don't care i'll do whatever but if they're being real quiet and they're by themselves i don't like to make a lot of noise because a lot of guys do like peace and quiet they like it to be quiet when they're fishing uh, you know, sounds can mess with the fish. That is for sure a thing. You don't have to be perfectly silent to catch a fish, but I mean, if I was fishing 10 feet from the bank, I probably wouldn't be talking really. That was a good pull right there. It's a real good pull on that one. Got some little pan fish 10 feet out. Just kind of surfacing right there. I guess it's time to rebait them, put some more bait out there. We got to get these fish in the area. Where are you guys? Come on. Oh, now that I think about it. I guess it makes sense what the difference in the bait runner and the drag system is. Drag, if you loosen it, you can pull it from the top. 
So I guess you could tighten your drag down for when you're reeling. And when you're not reeling and that runner's open, the line is kind of free to go. Maybe, I don't know. I'm learning about bait runners because there's zero clue. Where is this line at? Don't. Okay, I see it. It's kind of under some debris right here. Or it's over some debris. Hopefully it's not going to get in the way when we reel it in. There's still some activity like around all of them. So I don't want to... I hate to reel in and miss him or cause, you know, commotion and then miss the fish because we picked up the rod. But, I also don't like sitting here without a bunch of bait out there to help draw them in with the scent. And since carp are a, you know, schooling fish, they will, they'll be, they'll be in some numbers if you can get them in here. So I think, and my, my, you know, thought process is that more bait, the more food that, you know, disperses and you have a chance of keeping more carp in that area. Now they could behave differently, um, but as far as, you know, like an animalistic behavior, you would think if, uh, you know, if you got, say, two apples and you throw two apples out, you only have enough food for two animals, but if you throw 100 apples out, you've got enough to feed 100. So with carp being the way they are, schooling, you can keep, you know, you can draw more of them in because that food is there. There's a food source, so more of them can come in and kind of feed, and it keeps them in the area longer. So that is my breakdown of, you know, an animalistic type behavior pattern. Not every animal or species is going to follow that, but... Fish are not as smart as people make them out to be. That's something else I also agree with uh, Tom on his YouTube channel. I think he talked about it not long ago or in one of his videos. Maybe it was a long time ago. I don't know. Forget when I watched it, but he talked about fish intelligence. Like, yes, I think fish, you know, are not, they're not the dumbest creatures, but they're not super intelligent they're not learning you know oh this is a method feeder we should you know we should leave this area because we're about to get our lip you know ripped off i think it's more just they're feeding you know they're animals they like to feed that is what they do that is what they know to eat <clears throat> Reel them back in. I need a fish today. Come on. Just one would be nice. Get some grass. And stick. I'm going to throw this a little bit farther because I don't, I don't like that. I want to get it out there where... Because this is braid. I want to get it out there where it's got a good chance to be visible or the pop-up corn you know to be in a place i don't want to throw it in a bunch of weeds and it'd be tucked down in a bunch of crap all right so another little ball of bait throw it on out there dangled at the top there we go i'm gonna throw it oh our line on the right's getting danced it's a dancing Throw it a little farther this time, about 30 yards, 35 yards maybe. That's in the channel, so it should be about four foot right there. Yeah, I think we just got some small fish messing with this guy, so I'm gonna reel it in too. We'll just rebait them all. We're only gonna have a chance for it. Oh, that's gonna get hung up, ain't it? All right, maybe not. All 
right. Got her in. Yeah, that's good. This one's got a little bit more water in it at the bottom. I probably should have mixed it up in the bag. A little better. We're gonna go pretty close to the same spot. There it is. That's a cart. Oh, that's a good one. God, he's way out there. Take a minute. Well, this is not the new curse gear, I can tell you that. That's exciting. God, he was about 50 yards out there. I mean, he took it from about 40 yards and went probably, shoot, that's probably 70, 80 yards out there. He's finally coming to the bank. I'm gonna walk down there a little bit. Try to coax him in this way. Straight to the bank. And it's cramping my forearms on fire too. All right, I'm trying to wear him down. Still haven't got a good glimpse of him. Where is he at? All right, now he's finally coming over here. Come on. Nope, 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 nope. This way, buddy. Come on. Nope, out of that. I don't want you in my other line. Yeah, it's a big one. It's actually not that big. Oh, not big at all. I mean, somewhere maybe eight, eight pound. Eh, could be pushing ten. Got him. Oh, that was fun. All right, Whew. bring him around here. Let's take a glimpse, get him on the mat. Huh? He's definitely 10, that's a 10 pounder for sure. Let me get my pliers that I don't have. So we're gonna pop this by hand. Luckily you're hooked just right, right in the corner of the mouth. Got it out. All right. Ooh. All right. Let's get this off of you. You're a pretty fish. You're big. You're bigger than I thought. You're definitely over 10. You might be 12 pound, actually. That's a big old fish. Oh, you slippery thing. Come here. You done slime my hands up. Yeah. Nope, come here. I got you. I'll let you back in there if you quit for a minute. I'll give you a second to chill. Get my hand right. Yeah, that's a big old fish. Pretty colors. 
not missing hardly one scale I see on this side looks good though big old tail look at that tail gosh that tail is just so powerful he's big shoulders he's he's over 10 he's somewhere around at least maybe 12 pound feels good give him a kiss all right let's get you back in there dude nope don't jump come on quit quit you're making me drop you quit Off he goes. All right. Well, new gear, no curse. That's refreshing. That's a positive. All right. What is? What were you doing with this thing? It's all tangled up in a stick. Didn't even get it in the right spot. That was fun. That's what we came here for. So. Whew. Oh, it's a good fish. Just a second, I gotta got a message i gotta handle um my old lady um All right, I got to get this one back out there because we got roughly 30 minutes. Mm. Get our bobber stop. Went all the way up there. All right, let's put a big old ball of bait because even if we don't catch one here, in the end giving these fish some food free cheap easy food that's how i look at it you know this bait's relatively cheap about i don't know two bucks 250 you can make a whole bag of this if you buy the things in bulk so i try to buy the old-fashioned oats in bulk and then i get the sweet feed from tractor supply and that's like 12 bucks for a 50 pound bag so that'll last a long time and then sugar is relatively cheap if you put it in there and so is corn so cheap bait we'll just say about three bat three bucks for a huge bag of bait i don't ever i mean i do use it all if i have a long enough session but most of the time i'm not fishing long enough for it to really matter it's about 50 yards out there we go just trying to get that set up in the right spot now now i can't remember what we were doing i don't think we rebated this one 
or we did. I'm gonna leave it because I don't remember. I think we had just rebaited all of them, didn't we? And then we had the hit. I was about to start working on that one, I think, or I just reeled this. Okay, that's right. We had cast that out. And then we were sitting here talking and had that fish. So that was it. All right. Well, fingers crossed we get us another one. I mean, that was a good size carp. He was over 10, just a little. 11, 12 pound probably. Nothing wrong with that though. That's a, that was a fun fish. I mean, he was way out there too. I don't know how I feel about this rod. Maybe if he was 20, 30 pounds, the, this rod would have felt a little bit better. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, you know, that medium, moderate fast is pretty, kind of stiff. I really like the fast action on the outside rods. Just the fight feels different. Um, not a lot. And it's hard to say fish for fish, and that's my first fish on this one, so I really can't give you a, you know, I, can't, I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm gonna have to catch more fish on it to give a true say on how I feel about it, but that was fun, man. I do think I, just from that one fish, I definitely prefer the medium seven foot fast action rods that I have on the outside when fighting these fish. But the more I use this, I'll, you know, maybe change my opinion. May like the bait runner. Maybe, maybe I put a bait runner on a, get a smaller bait runner and put it on a, uh, seven foot now that would probably be a good combo and give me the feel that i like um you know i've caught that was it that my pb caught it not long ago and it was 18 pounds i think i think it was 18. it's on video i think it's 18. it's like 19 8 in the net and that net the net on the boat was very very small and light so just said it was 18, so an 18 pound is my PB, and it felt great on that medium action rod. So I think I'd be all right with 20, 30, 40 pounders. Um, just have to take your time. Take your time. But that was exciting, that was good. I mean, I didn't get too excited. There is a guy just down the bank, and there's several people in their cars behind us, so I didn't wanna I tried to tone it down a little bit and not get too excited. You know, I am, oh, this one's already getting, getting it, come on. That's another thing I have uh, experienced is once you get a fish in an area and you throw it back in that area, if you do it within, you know, a reasonable amount of time, five, 10 minutes, there's more fish the carp they'll come back to that same spot there's probably you know i guess his buddies were around there he got you know hooked and didn't have a good time but since they're schooling fish there's other fish in that same area and they'll stumble across it i have caught i've caught five carp in one day or in a two-hour session five carp most i've ever caught and it was literally the same rod every single time. I kept throwing it back to the same spot, just boom, boom, boom. You know, there was a delay in between them, 10, 15 minutes, but that is my theory is that once you hook one, get it back out there pretty quick. Within five to 10 minutes, that way there's still food in there and you can keep them pulling back into that spot. They could just be hanging out not far from that spot, even if they get scattered you know, and disperse, they'll, they probably will come back if there's food there, you know, if they sense it and, and find it. All right, now, now the guy is gone.
Well, if I do the unedited of this video, I'm going to have to edit out a small, small clip here because um, there's nowhere to pee at this park. And um, the only private spot I have is in front of me. And so I might have to clip that out. So we're going to take a little break. Well, all right, we're back from a little pee break. That was only about, I don't know, a minute or two. Nothing happened, no, no bells, no rods bending. So we got, we're right around 20 minutes and we're gonna start packing up. So I'm not gonna rebate any of them. That'll just be it for today. Where are you at, Mr. Cop? Come on, let's get one more, make it a double for or two for the day. Two in a session's not bad. I'll take any, but I'd prefer to get one more. That size or bigger, come on. Where are the 20 pounders at in here? I know. No, we've got them in this, you know, river system, Cumberland River system. I mean, all these lakes and creeks and streams and everything that branch off from the Cumberland, they've been here so long that we're bound to have 20, 30, 40 pounders. Just got to find them. May not be in this area, you know, could be, Percy Priest could be a good spot. I need to go down there and fish sometime. It's only about a 35 minute drive roughly to the nearest ramp over there. So I could always, you know, try to hit that up. Wouldn't be a bad idea. I'd also like to go to Del Hollow Lake and carp fish because I I've been there, did catch a single thing. It didn't really carp fish, maybe like 30 minutes and uh nothing but supposedly they have some real massive trophy size carp in that lake there it is come on oh we're in that branch ain't we did he get off nope there he is i'm gonna give him a little play because there's logs and rocks and everything come on baby i can feel him a little bit i don't want to break it if he's big, this is only 10 or 12 pound line. If he's got any size to him, he could snap it. So I'm gonna take my time. Let him wear out, because he's, uh, he's a pretty good size from what I can see from here. I mean, he's creating a big old swirl. Look at that, look at that water, gosh. Well, I'm just keeping tension on him right now. I don't, he's not near enough, he's not tired enough to force in. Just keeping him tight, keeping this rod up. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? I'm gonna try to coax him back and keep him away from crossing lines here though. get out from that log right there. I don't want that. Still ain't seeing real good. Still pulling drag, stirring up mud, all kinds of mud get stirred up by him. Must be a decent size one. He ain't no four pounder, that's for sure. We got logs and everything that we're messing with over here. I don't like it at all, rocks and logs. I keep feeling the line get dragged across stuff and it's popping. I barely seen him. Another 10 pounder, good size. Come on, you had enough running. Come on, buddy, good. 
Good little fish. Well, he ain't really little, but good fish. Good fish, good fish. Come on. Away from that branch. Come on. Get you over here and get you in the net. Yeah. Close to 10. If he ain't 10. Keep you away from those logs, dude. Come on. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. That's a big branch. You ain't got time for that. I don't horse them very often, but if they get near some type of structure, I will. I'll put the tighten the drag and I'd rather risk him popping off with a fight versus me getting snagged on a branch or something stupid like that. I mean, he's still pulling drag and I've got it pretty tight on this rod or this reel right now. He might be a little bit bigger than the last one. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. You got some size on you. <laughs> ah, ran out right as soon as I got you in the net. You don't know what to think right now, do you? Still got that fight in it. Tighten it just a click or two. Whew. This has been a heck of a fight to get this guy in. He's bigger than 10. He's not a PB, but he is an angry little fish. Angry, angry, angry. All right, come on, you're already there. Roll out. You did. You got him that time. Whew. All right. He's bigger than bigger than the last. Oh my goodness. That net sucks. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna have to tell that company Atlas. That's an expensive carp net, and it sucks. Whew. All right. He's actually huge. Oh wow. He might be every bit of 18. He might be close to PB level. Actually, that is much bigger than the last one. Much bigger. You barely hooked in the mouth. Pop you out. Get out of here, come on. I got a bug on my leg. Oh, you turd. Come here, I'm trying to unhook you. <clears throat> trying to keep you keep you healthy and calm but you ain't cooperating too good get that hook out let me have it there we go all right a little turd you had to make that more difficult than it needed to be you really did all right you're every bit of nine 18 20 at 29 30 inches every every bit of 30 inches you are give him a little bit of pressure there oh god this is it's huge stop boy can't even get you to chill out yeah okay this actually might be close to 20. that is that is a big 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 old carp i mean i can't even look at that thing it's huge huge can't even get my hand around him to hold his back back tail quit 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 chill out give you another second to calm down i'm gonna get you back in there buddy i promise too pretty Gosh. All right. Well, there he is. That's a big old carp right there. He's pushing. He's pushing 20. I mean, he's got to be close to my PB18. Give him a kiss. 
All right, look at that. How wide he is. Gosh. Look at this guy. So we can't get a picture out of this. Look at that thing. Monster. All right, now you're tired. Let's get you back, because I gotta go. Get you back in there. I wasn't trying to get my shoes wet, but I did. Thanks, buddy, that was awesome. That was awesome, awesome. Ooh. I did not think he was that big. makes sense why that fight was so good he had he had 15 plus pounds behind him to pull with so makes perfect sense all right whoo got my heart racing there a little bit i'm out of breath too this net then irritated me so bad Maybe it's a manufacturing flaw, but the end of this net just slides in. It's not threaded. It looks like it would be threaded to screw on, but it ain't. So I just put electrical tape to hold it. And that works, but that is not how you're supposed to do it. It looks like it should thread on there, you know, screw on, but it doesn't. So I don't know, it's kind of a piece of junk because that happens all the time. That net, just handle the pop, the handle pops out. And got this all twisted, shoot. All right, are you, oh my goodness, how many times does it wrap around? Like, I don't know, at least at least 15 20 times all right where's the bobber stop you down there yep all right we're gonna pack up and call it i think what i might do is post the long form of this video and only edit out the the pee breaks that i needed because there's no other privacy except for right in front of us and I didn't really want to move the camera. So I'll edit those out and uh, make it a long form video. So probably about what, two hours is what we had. And then I'll probably also edit up, make a little nicer video with some editing and whatnot. Thought this one was getting bumped. All right. Well, let's see. Got to put all our stuff up. I don't need to lose it. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and outro it. All right, well, that was awesome. Two hours, two fish, both over 10. One had to be probably 12. That last one was probably pushing 20, 18, 17, 18 pounds. He was a big old fish, over 30 inches long. So I thought I heard something. At any rate, um, I'm going to cut this up into two different videos. I'm gonna do the long video, do an unedited just for fun. Um, I'll edit out the pee breaks, like I said. And then I'm gonna do a short video, edit it, you know, do some good editing and whatnot, videography stuff to it. So, <sighs> Whew, my heart's still kind of beating from that last one. So anyway, that was fun. Um, appreciate you guys watching and see you now in the next one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I was literally walking over to this one right as soon as I just turned that off. And it got hit. Oh, I done broke the net down and everything. Well, we hit them in all three spots today. We got one in the center out there, about 50 yards. We got one, it's a pretty decent one, I think. 
may not be as big as the other ones. Got some fight in him. He's carp or something, guys. If you ain't, if you're not carp fishing or never caught one, you're cheating yourself as far as fresh water goes. These are not trash fish at all. I don't know what your definition of trash fish is. I don't think there's anything as such as a trash fish. They all serve a purpose and they're all beautiful to me, but I guess if your definition of trash fish is one you don't eat, well, that would mean bass or trash fish for Americans because most people aren't eating largemouth bass. He's a little guy, it looks like. I can't kind of really get a good glimpse, but like I was saying, these fish are not trash to me. They're beautiful, strong, strongest freshwater fish I've ever fought. Caught a big 45 pound blue cat and it wasn't nearly as fun as this is. Now maybe a hundred, 120 pound blue would be fun, but these carp are just something. I'm gonna, I don't even think I'm gonna give him a lot of camera time. I gotta go. I was trying to get out of here. And he's a little smaller than other ones. He's probably somewhere around eight pound. I mean, he might be bigger if I can get a good glimpse, but dang, he won't quit thrashing around. Nah, he's one of the smaller ones. Five pound, maybe. Just feisty, man, they are so feisty. These small ones. Come on, I'm not giving him any play now. I'm just gonna get down here. I'm gonna unhook him and let him go. You don't even need camera time. Come on. We ain't got time for it. I gotta go. Little guy. I was literally trying to get out of here and then you had to hit it. Chill out. I'm gonna get you out. All right. Pop you free. Cause I gotta go, man. You're gonna make me late. Turn you over a little bit. Can't get it from that side. Which way is that hook going in? Oh, there it is. Okay, I got you. All right, buddy. You're a good five pounder. Get you back in there, though. I gotta go. Appreciate the fight. Well, what are you doing? Go that way. I gave you a good toss. There he goes. All right, he's tired now. All right. Okay. Whew. Well. Let's uh let's do that again. Well that was a surprise. Already packed up and a good size carp, five pounder, hit hard and started peeling some drag, so that was fun. But anyways, I gotta get out of here guys. So I do appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.